right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar hosted by IEEE GRSS Young Professionals. Today we are covering a specific special topic on career development in Japan for graduate students and young professionals presented by Dr. Ryo Natsuaki. Dr. Ryo is an associate professor within the Department of Electrical Engineering at the Tokyo University in Japan. He was previously aerospace project research associate at JAXA and a guest scientist at the Microwaves and Radar Institute at DLR. His research expertise is active remote sensing with synthetic aperture radar. He's a senior IEEE member and very active with GRSS with the Forest and React Technical Committees. Also served as secretary at IEEE GRSS Japan chapter and as publicity chair of IGAS 2019. We are very glad that he joined us in this webinar to give us an overview of the research environment in Japan and the most important things that you need to consider if you want to study or work in the field of geoscience and remote sensing there. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have some questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat box below. So we will have time for questions at the end. And a recorded version of this webinar will be also available on the YouTube channel of GRSS. So now, without further ado, rio -san, the floor is yours. Uh, I think you are yeah, still I'm muted. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for uh, your introduction, Ms. Um, Farouz. So, uh, hello everyone, or good morning, or good evening, or I'm in 11 o'clock in the evening, but anyway. So, um, I'm Ryo Natsaki from the University of Tokyo, Japan. And uh, today I'm going to talk about career de development in Japan for graduate students and young professionals. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, by estimating that you are uh, mostly want to work in Japan as a scientist or researchers in, in the field of geoscience and remote sensing um, as a foreigners I mean the in Japan uh, I mean the, if you are Japanese you need not to worry about the career development because it's very known but uh, I think most most of you uh, are not so familiar with the condition so um, Today I'm. I expect you are a such kind of person. Uh, before starting my talk, uh, let me introduce myself. So I was born in Tokyo, Japan, in 1986, and uh, got a PhD degree from the University of Tokyo in uh, 2014. And uh, my research topic is, as I introduced, uh, synthetic aperture radar and its interferometry. So um, after a PhD degree reception, I moved to JAXA as a postdoc here for three years um, as a aerospace project research associate and uh, or so-called postdoc. And at that time, I was doing for the CalVal and disaster management, I mean, disaster monitoring using ALS2 sensitive capacity radar satellites. After that, I moved to, oh, sorry, I'm mistaken. Um, it's from 19, uh, 2017, so sorry. Um, I became lecturer in the University of Tokyo and uh, raised to the associate professor in 2021, just two years ago. And in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Information Systems School of Engineering. And during the these years, I was a guest scientist in Microwaves and Radio Institute, German Aerospace Center, Germany, under the Overseas Research Fellowships of Japan. I mean, the of the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. You may see these this logo for several times in this slide. Uh, and also, I am uh, also doing the external researcher in the. Artificial Intelligence Research Center in National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, Japan. And so when I was in Germany or in the during the conference, when I attend conference, I, I have been asked several times like this kind of questions. If there's an open PhD position in my lab, or if you if you if I know uh, some open PhD position for me or something like that. 
or how to find an open postdoc position in Japan, or uh, how to get a job in Japan. Some people are very confident of getting a job, but uh, but some were very um, worried about if that person need to be able to speak Japanese fluently. I mean, uh, I can only speak Japanese, I can only speak English and my own language and French and something like that, but I cannot speak Japanese. Can I work in Japan or something? Some people ask like that kind of things. And so uh, today I'm going to answer these questions. The most easiest, uh, the easiest question is this. Um, there's a good news. So you need not to speak Japanese initially. Japanese language skill is not mandatory if you are a student, including PhD student or postdoc or guest scientist if you are invited. So uh, either English or Japanese is fine. Of course, uh, some supervisors in in the university are not so uh, good English speakers, so you have to learn Japanese faster. But anyway, uh, Japanese language skills is not mandatory. Uh, it becomes mandatory if you are um, becoming a tenured or if you're going to launch a company in Japan. So, um, if you are uh, if you start your career in Japan as a student or postdoc or something like that, then uh, you need not to speak Japanese at first. So um, my recommendation is like this: so apply first, visit Japan first, and then study Japanese afterward. If you um, study Japanese like three years or five years or Japanese fluently. So, um, you do, you do. so the next question becomes then where that person can apply uh, or position or start uh, studying in Japan. Before answering this question, uh, let me introduce the sectors of research and development in Japan. Just an example. But, so, uh, of course, all countries have industrial section and education section and institution section or governmental sections. Uh, but their functions are a little bit different from country to country. So I just list uh, just an example of the, those uh, industry, education, and the institutions. Or we call Sangakukan or for each. each, each. Uh, this character is uh, San industrial and gak education or kan is institution or governmental institutions well and so industry we have a plenty of jobs in uh in the some company many companies like you, you may know these con, con, uh, these companies like mitsubishi or nec or Fujitsu or statue or something like that or um other many uh earth observation services and satellite operators and also um, some centers and also you we have a lot of national and private university in japan so i, I just list uh, national universities but of course we have dozens of universities so maybe you have you may know some of the these uh, universities but Anyway, we have, you need not to worry about the, how, where to study. Or um, you may have uh, too much uh, number of universities, so it, you, it seems very difficult to find the best one. <laughs> but anyway, um, so an institution or governmental institutions, um, you may know JAXA, 
this rocket launchers and uh, satellite op operators. If you are interested in the industrial sciences and technologies AST, where I am now a guest scientist, is also a good choice. And NICT is National Institute for Telecommunications and Technologies. And also, if you are uh, studying in the maritime science, then uh, JAMSTEC is uh, one of, JAMSTEC has uh, one of the largest fleet in, in the world. And also uh, NIED, a National Institute for um, Disaster Management, and is a good place to research in the geoscience of the uh, disasters. There are also a National Institute for Environment State Studies or uh, Geospatial Information. And also, uh, there's a weekend. This is uh, one of the largest research institutes in Japan. Which has the K or Fukaku called the, which is the massive uh, supercomputer. And so, uh, how to apply the positions or how to get jobs here is the question. And for example, in JAXA, where I was, uh, it const its organization is like this. And it has, uh, of course, there's a headquarter here. And headquarter has a multiple dist uh, directorate or departments. And one of the department is Space Technology Directorate 1. And be below there's the Earth Observation Research Center. So you may find a lot of researchers from this uh, research center called EORC. Um, in IGRS, I think. And it, it consists of multiple research groups like AIRS Research Group, GCOM, GOSAT, or GPM, or something like that, blah, blah, blah. So there are a lot of uh, research groups which are handling for the calibration and validation for the satellites and internal research, of course, and uh, research announcement and handling and something like that. So um, those research groups uh, have responsible of for these uh, missions. And it consists of uh, two to three tenure researchers and postdoc or for three to seven. And there's also um, advanced radar satellite project team. It's responsible for the developing new radar satellites like uh, ALOS-4. It will be launched in this year, I thought. And of course, it cons uh, consists of uh, like less than 10 tenure agents. Uh, there's also a ALS2 project team, operation team that is um, driving the current ALS2 radar satellites. You may find a question. Do only 10 or so researchers do those work all? I mean, the they are those like um, approximately 10 researchers or less are responsible for calculation, validation, and doing research, internal research for the new um, things, and also handling the multiple researchers' uh, research announcement and something like that. It sounds impossible, I think. You and also, uh, I think it's impossible. So actually, it's of course no. So uh, JAXA is governmental institution. So they commission their works into industry and education sectors. So um, that means um, not being a JAXA postdoc is uh, the, the being just JAXA's postdoc is not only the way to research in the ALS2 or but um, being commissioned from JAXA and in, as an industry sector or uh, researcher in the university is of course possible. And those are, or even those uh, sectors are more uh, driving force of the, for JAXA. Of course, 
some research institutions are more research oriented, like uh, ISD or RICAN. They are they consist of more researchers and not governmental or bureaucratic things. Um, some companies have their own research institutes. For example, Mitsubishi or Nishi or other things have their own research institutes. So if you become a researcher there, um, you can do research more. And some res senior researchers have multiple appointments for crossover the sectors. But what I one thing is fixed that the students are expected to graduate and then start working. So um, actually, there's no PhD position in JAXA. Uh, you may you may know um, ISAS. Uh, in, this is the also a research uh, institute in under JAXA, and this is an ex ex exception because ISAS is shared with the University of Tokyo, and it's also a partially university and partially space agency, but. Uh, that's an ex exception, and mostly, if you a PhD, if you are just master have master degree and want to be a PhD student or get PhD, then you have to go to university first and get PhD, and then become a postdoc in uh, institution or uh, research institute in private companies. This is a recommendation, or the. Mo most different career paths compared from the European uh, science um, sectors. So the next question is how to be a graduate student in Japan? Because if you want to be a researcher in Japan, you have to get a PhD degree and um, you need to go to university first, that means. And so first I'd like to list the uh, schedule here. The graduate school's entrance exam is like uh, scheduled like this. In May to July, we call for um, applications. So it will start from within five months or something like that. And after, the, after you apply, uh, the entrance exam will be held during July to August. And after that, in September, notification access acceptance will be uh, dispatched, and you can enter from either October 1st or in the next year's April 1st. This is the main uh, schedule. And also, Japanese we have a scholarship called uh, Japanese government bonds, like uh, MEXT scholarship. And this is, uh, for example, um, scheduled like this. In April, we call for applications and in each Japanese embassy or consulate. So you, you have to check the schedule in, for Japanese com, uh, embassy in your country. But, and so if you access there, you, you may find a call for application in April. And in June, the first screening will be held. In se September, um, you have to submit the placement preference if you pass the first screening. That means uh, you can uh, uh, you can ask or send a preference that where which university you want to go. And the second screening will be held. So and finally in January notification of acceptance will be dispatched. So uh, in either case uh, a from April to May, uh, we call for applications. So uh, you have to first uh, find which uh, university you want to go and during this January to uh, March and uh, send an applications in April to May. So that, so please do not miss the uh, deadline. And also, uh, some other scholarship will be uh, held in every country. For example, in China, they have a China Scholarship Council, and they have a scholarship overseas scholarships. And in other countries, you may have 
I do not uh, know in precise, but uh, many countries have a uh, scholarship to uh, send your you to overseas, and one of the destination is uh, Japan. Anyway, all applica applicants must have a financial background, including scholarship in Japan. Of course, um, you can say I'm going to apply scholarship um, soon after I got a notifi notification or acceptance or something like that might be fine. But anyway, you ha you need a background, and and af of course, universities hire students for uh, research and uh, research assistant or teaching assistant. But uh, being student is fine first. This is because uh, in as I as I said before, uh, there's no open PhD position. I mean, there's no we do not um, hire students, but we let students study. And um, so, how to be a PhD student? I mean, in in gen, this is this schedule is in general talking. So, both it includes both master degree and PhD degrees. And uh, master degrees, you have uh, scholarships, and of course, uh, you may have a plan to be a master's. And BH, being a PhD student uh, have uh, have the same procedure, but requ uh, requ requirements are a little bit different. So PhD students are mostly not hired by a supervisor's project in Japan. If you ask, like, is there any open PhD position? This is a, this is a wrong question. And you have to plan and conduct your own research team under supervisor's support. So uh, what you have to do is, I want to be a scientist in the field of something. This is the cor correct question. And th therefore, you have to first find a supervisor, which might uh, teach you and lead you leads your pro um, your pro project and supervise your um, research. If you have no connection, please attend conferences and meet researchers in Japan, for example, in Niger's. Its deadline is in, I thought it's this Friday, so you can write five, 500 to 1,000 um, abstract anyway. And of course, research expense will be supported by uh, your supervisor's budget. That means uh, your research topic must be relevant to you, relevant to your research uh, supervisor. And also, uh, you can get a grant in aid from JSPS. They have a grant in aid for PhD student. But it requires, for example, like uh, more than one pa journal paper or something like that. And so anyway, you, you have a research budget and also you have a financial background. Then uh, if, you you, if you are regarded as a good PhD candidate in Japan, your supervisor will uh, um, accept your visit. And so um, you may get a PhD position in Japan. Then, uh, I mean, if you get a PhD degree in Japan, sorry, then uh, next question becomes how to be a postdoc in Japan. And uh, so this is a bit tough question, but there are several um, ways to find the posts, positions. Um, one is Jerry Quinn. This, uh, JREC-N is a, nation, a national job matching site for researchers. So you may find open positions in your research field. Um, some of them are written in Japanese because um, they want Japanese uh, speakers. But, but sometimes in some cases, uh, they ac ac expect or they accept English speakers. So, um, you may access, access and find if there's an open position here. Or um, contact researchers in Japan and ask for um, open positions. This is another choice. 
Japanese financial calendar starts from April. And senior researchers will be asked, I mean, national research, uh, like national research institutes will be asked by their headquarters if they want any postdoc in late spring. So, um, and then they make a financial plan for the next uh, financial year in September. So uh, by then, national institutes must um, find a researcher, I mean, postdoc candidate to, uh, for hiring. So first, um, so um, if, you, if the senior researchers think they want the postdoc, and if you want to become a candidate, then first contact researchers and ask if there's any open positions there. Or uh, you, you may find the JSPSS International Fellowships for Research in Japan. There are various granting grants for pre-doctoral pre or senior researchers. I mean, the, we have some short-term visit for overseas researchers, like six months, to um, a bit longer, two years of visiting in Japan. If they're a host researcher in Japan, and uh, if that person think you are a good candidate for those uh, visiting young scientists, then uh, you, uh, you, you and your um, host researcher can discuss and apply this uh, fellowship grant. But in any way, most researchers don't know about you. That's the problem. Because if you have, if, if uh, Japanese researchers know about you and feel that you are worth inviting, then um, they may make a position and, or you may, they may ask if you are interested in Jap working in Japan. So, uh, if you have no connection, attend conferences and meet researchers, for example, in Digers, or there are um, multiple international uh, conferences these years, and now it's like a post-corona era, so there's um, on-site conferences, like AGU, EGU, uh, Digers, ISPRS, um, Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So, um, first you have to introduce yourself to, if you, if you have good connection between Japanese researchers and that person have uh, this kind of budget or position or something like that, then um, you can get the postdoc in Japan. Then, after the postdoc, you want to be a, if you want to become a tenure, that's a bit um, tough question. So uh, let me uh, introduce or about uh, Professor Robert J. Gala in the University of Tokyo. Uh, he is now seventy years old, so uh, very senior. And uh, but uh, anyway, in nineteen eighty four, just two years before I was born, uh, he became. Um, the first tenured foreign faculty member in the University of Hi Tokyo's history. So uh, it's just 40 years ago, we uh, welcome foreigners as a tenured researcher. Of course, nowadays, approximately 100 out of 2,500 2000, 2000, tenured faculty members are non-Japanese citizenships. So uh, in, the, in our university. so. Um, Becoming tenured professor is not easy. I mean, this hundred out of twenty five hundred means in, it includes professor, associate professor, lecturer, and something like that. So, become a full professor is not easy, and uh, it's not easy for Japanese either. So, anyway, but uh, for foreign non-Japanese citizenship, uh, it it's um, harder, but uh, but not impossible anyway. But uh, you need to be able to speak Japanese because you have to give a lecture to the students in Japanese sometimes. 
and also you have to lead group members i mean research group members consists of students and other um, secretaries and something like that and work with other officials so um japanese skill is becomes mandatory so you have to learn japanese by then anyway so uh this is the academic career in japan uh, then how to be a researcher in industry? This is another question. And there's another career path. So let me introduce this too. Uh, rec so recruitment for master degree students in Japan are mostly done by uh, the uh, job matching sites. So you have to be able to speak Japanese by then somehow. Of course, uh, not all uh, students are um, Japanese are, can speak Japanese fluently. So um, of course, some job matching sites have um, English sites, but the number of positions becomes very small. And uh, recruitment for PhD students in Japan is mostly be, uh, found in conferences or workshops in Japan. For example, uh, I'm uh, also a member of the Institute of Electronics Information and Communication Engineers in Japan, and it encourages to add career exp uh, explorer mark, this one. It's this fancy uh, patch. If you add this fancy patch into your slides during the conference, then uh, researchers from industry may find uh, you are looking for the job and ask if you are interested in Work, work in my company or something like that. So, so that attendees can find you are uh, looking for a job. And so if you are a student in Japan, you, you can do find a job like this way in it for industry. So um, for a bachelor and master degree students in Japan, you have to go to, uh, or, or you have to get the job matching there in the matching sites. And if you're a PhD student, you have to attend conference or workshops uh, and add fancy marks in the slides so that uh, industry people will scout you. And uh, recruitment from foreign countries is another, um, another matter. You can rarely find research jo researcher job, but maybe find in LinkedIn or somewhere like that. But the easiest way is to get a job in foreign branches of Japanese industries. Some comp companies have uh, are eager to hire foreign researchers too, and you may find uh, open jobs. But anyway, this is a little bit tough because we have uh, those other routes for Japanese and most companies are satisfied for in this system. So uh, if, if those companies have branches in overseas, then you can, uh, they will open the position in, for those branches. And the last solution is make a company for your own in Japan. This is not a joke. Some students really make uh, launch a job in um, launch a company in Japan. So uh, this is a summary and then end of my slides that career development for young researchers in Japan. In summary, uh, graduate and master uh, graduate master and PhD in Japan is idea. It it is the easiest way to find a job in Japan and make a career path successfully. Of course, postdoc positions can be found from overseas, but better to make a con contact first, for example, in conference, and introduce your research topic or introduce your research skill or publications so that those uh, Japanese agencies may find you a good researcher who are eager to Japan, uh, visit Japan. Uh, you need not to be able to speak Japanese, but it is very encouraged because if you can speak Japanese, then you can get more um, chance for uh, for working in Japan. And of course, it is strongly encouraged and recommended to be uh, 
if you want to be a tenure in Japan. But anyway, uh, we warmly welcome you in Japan. So um, please apply the and study in Japan and get job. And, and this is my end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yosan. That was an amazing overview. Uh, so we will go ahead and take some time to type your questions in the chat box. So we have, have the first question. So Narayan is asking, can bachelor graduates get a job in Japan so without a master or a PhD? Uh, yes, but um, the bachelor degrees uh, also be most industry have um, hired bachelors via job matching sites, so you need to speak Japanese first, I think. I mean, the, there are some um, companies who welcome um, non-Japanese non speakers, but uh, it's very difficult to find if you want to re do research or development. Because, of course, some, um, software development com companies are they have a lot of English speakers, and um, but if you want to do something specific, specific uh, related to geoscience and remote sensing, then um, I mean the the chance becomes very small. I think. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, Kristan is an undergraduate student, and he mm -hmm. said he will be presenting the research in an on-site conference in a few months. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any tips on how to maximize the experience once uh, he participates there? So, like mm -hmm. how he network. Can I network better on the other uh, tips for first timer in or other tips for a first time? Mm. Ah, yes. So uh, this is a good question. And so uh, first, you have to read the proceedings. I mean, the there's a sch time schedules and a list of researchers and find uh, first find which uh, topic of the Conf I mean, conference, which uh, session is uh, looks good for your topic and interest. And then uh, find the speakers and see their publications and what is the in what is their interest and think that who might be uh get might get interested in your research topic too and after their session you may uh catch him soon catch that person soon after their uh, session and say uh hello and question about their um presentation or uh ask to uh introduce your research topic and ask you to attend your session or something like that. That is, I think, the best way to get the contact first. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And mm. I want to add something. So during conferences, there are also um, many networking events happening at the same time. So not basically technical, but also like for young professionals, for students. So I really recommend you to attend mm. those events so you can exchange with experts directly and talk with many people mm. and get to know many people there. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. That's that's also important thing. Good. Yeah. Mm. So another question from Haitham. So he's from the GSS section in the United Arab Emirates. Um, what conferences would you recommend to participate in? Ah, <laughs> that's a very, very difficult question. I I do not know. Uh, I usually attend Igers every year, but uh, it depends on your research topic because and you you can ask your uh, supervisors which conference is the best to attend because uh, many 
there are many flagship conferences in every society, like uh, Geoscience Union or Geoscience and Remote Sensing or Remote Sensing. And so there are a lot of institutes or um, conferences, and some of them are uh, very uh, big mass. And but so you can find a lot of researchers in broad topics, but uh, if you want to discuss in narrow topics and but they're very deep, then you there might be a smaller conference, but uh, a lot of that kind of researchers may attend. So you must ask your uh, supervisors or uh, boss, or you have to find your uh, references because some, uh, and you may find a lot of uh, relevant papers from, you may find a lot of relevant papers from that relevant uh, conference, I think. Yes. Yeah, that's mm. the point. Yes. So uh, Rushida is uh, saying, so it's often said that the living cost uh, mm. in Japan is quite high, even with a proper scholarship. Mm. So could you kindly share lights if it's a myth, it's a lie, or it's really true like that? Uh, and it depends how, on where you live and how you live. I mean, the, uh, yes, so if, for example, in Tokyo, it's especially uh, the living cost is high. And sometimes uh, students live in very small dormitory. <laughs> and and so in that way that's uh true but uh mo in most cases there's a scholarship uh, the scholarship fee is enough to live in uh japan including tokyo and uh in universities in tokyo they have their own usually they have their own research uh, assistantships. I mean, the if you work a little bit in for the university, then they will pay salary for you in addition to the scholarship. So, um, in that and also there are a lot of international dormitories. Uh, they have uh, plenty of cheap rent fee, but enough uh, size of room with other students. So you can help each other and uh, live uh, with not so uh, big risk but if you miss all of those things i mean you if you miss scholarship and if you miss the um, dormitory then living in like a general person then it becomes a little bit tough so so this is this is the reason why we ask for your financial background if you get the scholarship or something like that yeah yes and any particular conferences uh, yes, I, I saw you. I usually agree. Uh, attend for for me. I am a uh, so, so researcher, so I usually attend IGERS and uh, APSAR or uh, EUSAR. Or and also this year there's a um, URSI's uh, general assembly, so I attend. I'm planning to attend it. The next one is please mention about the exchange programs for the international students and fellowships for an year in research field of remote sensing. Kindly mention about such fellowships. Yes, we have a lot of exchange programs. You, if you are a um, student in your university, then you can find a list exchange, exchange programs or ex ex exchange uh, scholarships too. So, and so if you find the good destination uh it is recommended by yours to do it by yourself and uh then you can apply the exchange program and go to that um go go to japan uh, via that program i think yes uh and sorry sorry for missing that is there any postdoc positions in professor natsaki's lab uh, sorry, I do not have postdoc position because I do not. I currently I do not have uh, enough funds. But if we, uh, yeah, if if I have that kind of things, then I will open the postdoc position, of course. And is there any internship program? Yes, 
uh, there are a lot of internship programs like ISEC or EIS or and so you can visit short programs and uh, short visiting like uh, several months to half half a year. You can visit Japanese um, industry or in the uh, Japanese uh, universities. And the uh, next one from Mohammad Shahem, uh, Shamin is a uh, presentation. So, based on your experience outside in Japan, in your opinion, which aspect of Japanese job market is different that makes it hard for foreigners? Uh, so, um, well, I've I've been in Germany for two years and found that they uh, they have a lot of job markets. I mean, if you you can move one one company to another company very uh, easily. And well, in Japan, most um, jobs are tenure in for especially for the industry. So uh, they do not expect uh early quit i mean you, they expect you to stay uh like dozens of years in one company so um fluent job change is not uh of course they, we have we change a job but every several years but uh if you want to stay in Jap in one company then they will hire like for full full life and that's why that is the reason why uh, they want you to speak Japanese fluently. <laughs> and so I think uh, Haitham is raising his hand. He wants to ask directly. So please oh, yeah. go ahead. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to talk to you all of you. Uh, I am the secretary of the GRSS section in the UAE. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation and thank you, Fayouz, for making this happen. I have a question regarding the particular topics of interest to researchers in Japan. Uh, for example, would you be more specific in terms of, for example, would antennas and wave propagation be of particular interest or is it electronics or is it receiver? And, mm. and transceiver sub subsystems. Uh, can you elaborate, elaborate on this point? Mm, excuse me? Uh, can you elaborate on which areas of interest mm. are, or, uh, sorry, or like which areas are of particular interest to researchers in Japan in terms of geoscience and remote mm. sensing? Uh, yes, so uh, that's a you very You can start with yourself. You can start with yourself. <laughs> And how shall I do? How shall I respond, Bill? Um, in my understanding, um, for me, I I was from a uh, school of engineering and doing the electromagnetic fields and a study for electromag electromagnetic fields and uh, radio systems. But uh, of course, if you want to do a uh, more geoscience oriented things like GIS systems, then it becomes like a topic in the School of Science. And so it be and also some topics becomes mutual, like uh, if you are going to do like um, neural networks analysis, then you it becomes like an information sciences. <laughs> so there are multiple topics, but in general, many universities cover those all, all those topics. So, yeah. my last question I, I'm sorry to take more of your time. My last co question would be when it comes to antennas and wave mm -hmm. propagation or electromagnetics, mm -hmm. what, what, would, what, kind of, what kind of specialities are we talking about? What kind of streams are we talking about? For example, are we talking about radars or arrays, antenna arrays? Uh, I mean, mm. there are so many different subfields. Yes. Well, but uh, in Japan, I think telecommunications are more uh, encouraged to study like that kind of things. I mean, of course, we study for radar systems and antennas, but uh, if you're doing about the antenna system, then um, like 
we have a lot of um, telecommunication systems and broadcasting systems, and those use more, uh, um, those are more relevant, I think, in my, in my opinion. But anyway, remote sensing is also a topic and th that's also an emerging industry. So uh, that's not an ex exception, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Thank you both of you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, yes, and so I have one question that you don't see here. So it was directly sent to me from Waishung. Uh, can you share some of your views on how is the R&D experience in Japan? How is the demand for remote sensing researchers in Japan? Oh, uh, well, um, so uh, we have plenty of demands and also especially in the industry sectors now we are hiring hiring a lot of data scientists that means um, we're for example we are building a smart so-called smart city that means we get a lot of information like G gis systems and automatic mobilities and those uh, we need a lot of people who are very familiar with gis systems and remote sensing i mean it, it means the sensing system in general, I think. And okay. the next question is, I think, from Jiling Wu, that do instruction instructors in Japan introduce or recommend jobs to, to their students? And well, uh, mostly in university, it, it is done by the faculty level or university level. Of course, um, professors have their own contact for the jobs, but if you are a master or master students or bachelor students then um, faculty level or department level they have a recommendation for the jobs too mm. and any op op any opportunities after phds in this research area um from the batula um Balnar Balnar Saya, sorry and any opportunities after a PhD in this research area? That's, um, well, we have a plenty of opportunities, and but I'm not sure whether the research topic matches with that your research topic in PhD, because um, some, some of my friends are glaciologists, and they research about the glacier in Japan, but actually we do not have glacier in Japan. So um, he, the, my friend researching the glacier in Nepal or Arctic area, but so there's no jobs like researching uh, glacier in Japan, actually. <laughs> so uh, it depends on how you accept the irrelevant topic or like that. And or the or research topic in PhD. So if you your research topic is very close to the industry, there are a lot of jobs, very relevant things. But if you are a bit bit far from that kind of things, then you your topic might be different or something like that. From uh, Rushila Biswas is uh, I have another question. I am doing my master's in atmosphere and ocean science in India. My question is to apply for PhD. What are the skills that are expected from the students? For example, in terms of software skills in publications. Well, um, in Japan, um, especially for PhD students, we uh, we look for the publications because um, publications is the something the proof that you can conduct and conduct your research and publicize the results and um, we regard phd people is that person that can do that kind of things i mean the all phd must uh plan your research topic and conduct the research and publicize the results. So the all PhD candidates are evaluated by the supervisors, whether you can 
do that kind of things or potentially do, able to do that kind of things. And another one is, may I ask, answer that uh, from Ab Abhinav uh, Galoda is upcoming conferences for 2023 and 24 in Japan in the area of remote sensing um, a AI and machine learning. Oh, well, uh, well, we have also machine, um, we have our own conferences in Japan, and also there are a lot of international conferences held in Japan. Uh, I, I do not know in detail because, but usually you can search uh, major institutes or and and search when it will be held in Japan. I know um, that the APSR as a Pacific Conference on Synthetic Aperture Radar will be held in 2025. <laughs> and the other remote sensing research uh, conferences and AI of course machine learning conferences will be held in Japan. But, um, but you have, I think you have to first search by yourself, I think, sorry. <laughs> And is there any project going or any opportunity to do PhD on applications of remote sensing in some extreme weather events like tropical cyclone? Of course, yes. Yes, we have that kind of PhD topics. And because we have researchers for PhD uh, researchers who do that kind of things in universities. But uh, so first you have to um, contact those researchers in Japan or uh, and whether there's an open position that will be uh, fit to your research topic and your uh, publications. Because most researchers get contact a lot whether they, you, they have an open position. And so, so uh, you have to compete them by your research uh, publications and uh, so, and so um, first you have to find your job. I mean, the first you, you have to find your potential supervisor or potential boss or potential research institutes or universities uh, in Japan, uh, which research topic is relevant to your topic. Hmm. And ask if there's an open position or um, potentially you can accept uh, potential acceptance. And then uh, compete your rivals and get positions. <laughs> that is the uh, path, I think. Okay. Mm. Um, one last question I got. So if you have a PhD, for example, in Japan, mm. so is it common to stay in academia and do a postdoc or like work as a researcher or in the industry? So what is more common in Japan? Well, I think uh, working in industry is more uh, common in for this topic, I think. And of course, the university position is the number of pos pos position is very limited. So um, many people go to industries and do their research. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, it looks like we have covered all the questions. Mm -hmm. so, uh, do you have anything else you wanted to cover before a wrap up? No. No, okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you so much for your time. It was an amazing session. And thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. So a recorded version of the webinar will be posted on the YouTube channel of GRSS. And thanks again for joining us. And we will see you next time around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.